I'm Christian Blumenfeld, a Norwegian triathlete racing the short distance, and uh, you're listening to the Physical Performance Show. And the winner is... Failure is not an option. I've had my ups and my downs. I think it's an absolutely breakthrough experience. Welcome to the Physical Performance Show, the show designed to inspire the pursuit of your physical best performance. I'm your host, Brad Beer. Listen in as we delve into how the world's top physical performers achieve their success, as well as the highs, the lows, and the journey of getting there. Let's get ready, set, let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Physical Performance Show, brought to you by the Gold Coast Marathon and Pogo Physio. I trust you've been having a great week, and I trust that you've been enjoying pursuing your physical best performance. On today's episode, I share a conversation with you that I had with Olympic Norwegian triathlete, Christian Blumenfeld. Christian really sprung to prominence in 2017 with some solid performances, one being his victory in the Super League Triathlon Series in Jersey. Christian quickly followed that up with a win in the 70.3 Bahrain Triathlon, overcoming some of the sport's best names. In 2018, Christian has taken a podium in the Bermuda Leg of the World Triathlon Series, and he firmly has his eyes on gold in Tokyo 2020. And on today's episode, Christian takes us behind the scenes of his training world, the highs, the lows, and the learnings. So let's jump in with Christian Blumenfeld, Norwegian Olympic triathlete. Christian Blumenfeld, uh, great to finally connect. We've been uh, trying to get this one organized for a little while. So I'm going to ask you something straight out of the gate, and that is what's one thing that Christian Blumenfeld is learning at the moment? Uh, I think I'm always trying to learn how to swim properly. That, that, that's uh, a thing we're working on. Trying to learn how to swim properly, yeah? Yeah. Being being more, instead of being that middle pack swimmer, we tried to strive to be uh, like always in the top top five, top six of the water. But that's something we have yeah, are focusing on at the moment. And what are you practically doing to try and uh, you know take yourself from where you you know from where you are to where you want to be with 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 the swimming? Are you doing more more work, more volume, stroke correction? What sort of things? It's a, a lot of technique work and also trying to build the set up so I'm able to swim with the correct technique throughout the set and not just getting the distance in but doing it properly and is there anything specifically with your technique you're working on like a different you know catch a different pull through or a recovery part of the stroke it's a lot a lot of uh, with the rhythm and also the catch and the feel for the water that i'm not just spinning around but that i'm actually moving forward for each stroke i'm taking trying to get a little bit higher elbow and and keeping it throughout the stroke so and uh christian let's let's talk about your beginnings you know you're young in years Mm. you're in your early 20s it feels in many ways like you've been around for years with your your (laughs) prominent results in more recent times uh but before we talk about some of the results and the stories behind them uh, the highs the lows and the learnings as we we say on the physical performance show christian uh how did you get started in triathlon what was life like growing up for you? Uh, it was actually a bit of a coincidence that I came into the sport. Uh, originally, I'm coming from a swimming background, even though that's my weakest discipline. So I was I was a swimmer when I was younger and also playing football. And then um, even though I was working really, really hard in the pool, I didn't really get the um, improvement that I think I, I deserved. But at the same time, I was running really, really well. When I was like competing in swimming, I was maybe one of the uh, last one in competition. But in the same time, I could be one of the best junior runners in our country. So then my swim coach just told me that maybe I should uh, give triathlon a try. So he found like a list of different events that he thought that I should uh, give a try. And then I joined a local race 
here in Bergen back in 2008. Uh, a few months later, we started up with a youth national team, and I was lucky to be one of four guys there to be a part of the beginning. So you've done a lot in 10 years. You, you mentioned there, uh, you know, you're working hard in the pool as a junior swimmer without getting any improvements. What do you put that down to? Just more uh, natural to be on the land, to be running and cycling than, than being in the pool. And also uh, on the bike and in the run, you can get really, really far with just being uh, strong and having the endurance while in the pool you you really have to work with the technique and I haven't been able to get it down properly, I guess. So that's why we're working on the stro- stroke and uh, the rhythm now to, to get the endurance out in the water as well. Yeah, I see. So it's, you know, you've got the natural big engine, you know, you're, I know you, you commented mm-hmm. recently 81 to 87 with your VO2 max. And now it's a matter of uh, trying to make it a smooth engine with your technique, I guess, in the water. Uh, what, what events were you targeting in your junior swimming years, Christian? Oh, because I was doing so bad on the 100 and 200, I was just going longer and longer. So I, I used to swim 800 and 1500. And then putting in some some medley or 200 fly just to have some extra events to do. But it was mainly the longer stuff. One theme there, Christian, is the longer stuff, 200 fly and medley, There's uh, they're all fairly arduous uh, swimming events. So you, you certainly don't mind the hard work. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I like it. Uh, I enjoy the training for it as well, and I've done it for years. So that's maybe why triathlon suits me quite well. Well, I think uh, it suits you very well, Christian. Christian, uh, before we talk about you know, m- your, your current results and some of the great form you've had in recent times, your, uh, your running background there. So as a child growing up, you were, were you, you know, making national teams as a runner or were you, uh, you know, mixing it up at the, the national level there, what, on cross country, on the track or on road, in road racing? What did your, your junior running years look like? In the beginning, I was just uh, doing the runs uh, with my swimming club. So we used to run maybe twice or three times a week during the summer. And uh, when I was like 10 years, I was running with uh, the oldest guy in the club. And, and I also did play a lot of football. So I got like the running from, from the football. Uh, but I didn't compete in running before I was like 17, I think. And then uh, I was showing up at the national cross country championship and i won it yeah. and then i did the nordic championship with that sweden denmark and norway and finland i think and i got second there in the juniors and then the following year race was the european cross country it was kind of very very steep learning curve uh, on the running yeah running competitions and, uh, and Christian, what sort of mileage might have you been doing back then in your junior running years, you know, to, for the week? Uh, until I was 17, I guess there was not much, maybe 30, 30 Ks a week. Yeah. 40? So, so I'm not sure. Not, not a huge amount. No, no, no. And then that was, that was like the timing when I started working with my coach. That was like at the end of 2010. In the spring 2011, we decided, okay, now we have to change and do a proper running program we have to run five to seven times a week and that was when i like started really improving on the run as well so then uh, we maybe picked it up from 30ks a week to 60 maybe You're listening to Christian Blumenfeld, Norwegian Olympic triathlete, sharing around the highs, the lows, and the learnings of his career to date. Support for today's show comes from the Gold Coast Marathon. Just like the Physical Performance Show, the Gold Coast Marathon encourages runners of all ages and abilities to push their boundaries and strive to complete a personal challenge. The Gold Coast Marathon is held annually on the first weekend in July, and it's a must-do event for any budding athlete, weekend warrior or family looking for a challenge to complete together. Run for the good times at the Gold Coast Marathon. Visit goldcoastmarathon.com.au. Support for today's show also comes from Pogo Physio. We exist to help you get back to your physical best following injury. We want 
everyone who walks through the doors of Pogo Physio to cross their physio finish line. That's where we high five you and tell you that you finished rehabilitation and celebrate you being back to your physical best. In addition to traditional session to session appointments, we offer some industry first models of care, including our unique and award winning two, six and 12 week fixed feet unlimited access finish line programs and our very popular monthly fixed fee wellness booster packages. These will help you save money and recover faster. To find out more, jump over to pogophysio.com.au. To put us in perspective, as a junior, what sort of times were you running around, you know, at clocking at this point in your career for, say, a 5,000 metres or 5K? I did 15, 12. I think when I was 17. So very, uh, very handy. Did you try a 10K or a 10,000 metres at 17 years of age, Christian? Uh, no, not in uh, track and field. I had done some local uh, 10Ks like in a rolling terrain here in Bergen. So I did, for example, one when I was 12 at 36.06 which is quite good for being 12. <laughs> for, so, for a 12-year-old. So it's always been like uh, natural to run for me, I reckon. It's, it's, you're just a born runner. Christian, uh, who was uh, the inspiration growing up? Were there any athletic figures that you admired in these junior formative years? In my, in my local swimming club, we used to have uh, a guy called Alexander Dalla Owen, and he was uh, like European champion and soon to become world champion in swimming and i was uh lucky to be be close and see what he was doing and how he was training and how strongly he believed that he could be become the best in the world and uh that, that was like really inspiration to see and, and did he go on to to achieve that goal or you were just inspired by watching him go about that yeah he did he won in 2011 he won the world championship in swimming oh fantastic and in beijing Three years earlier, he got the uh, silver. He definitely yeah, become one of the best in the world. And to see how he was able to do that without really having the same facilities as the rest of the world. Like he was swimming in a 25-meter pool, full lane with all, eight other guys, instead of having the same facilities as you have in Australia or um, in the U.S. Just by putting in the hard work, that was, I think, has been key to, to see and and see that hard work really pays off. And that lesser facility, you know, that lesser resource, is that just because in Norway swimming is not as prominent as the US or Australia? Yeah, it's, it's just not, we don't have the same facilities in swimming. Or actually, actually since then we've got a new 50-meter pool here in Bergen, which is fantastic. So for now we have the very best. Uh-huh. But until that point... Uh, it was uh, hard to find time in the pool. 25 metres only. Who, who do you think you get your sporting genes from, Christian, your mother or father? <laughs> None of them. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not, uh, they're not active or sporty? No, they aren't really uh, athletics. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> Any talented siblings in the family? I have a sister who's doing a little bit of, um, not weightlifting, but powerlifting. Okay. She has done it okay there. But uh, other than that, it's not really high performance family. <laughs> you're the uh, you're the one that does it all for them. And, and could you have imagined, <laughs> as this junior, you know, stepping into a, the triathlon world at 2008, that your career would now be on the trajectory that it clearly is now on? Uh, maybe not in 2008, because I remember back in 2010 when I did my first international race. I got like a big shock when I came to the European Championship and saw how fast uh, everyone was racing and swimming and especially running. They were running like 15 flat in the World Junior Championship that year, I think. I think I was actually Mario Mola who won it. And uh, then I think that that's crazy. But then the following year when I was able to step up my running level in 2011, and was able to race like among the very best juniors in the world. I start believing that yeah, yeah, I can actually become one of the best seniors as well. So, so that belief was galvanised. Mm. Christian, your results, uh, you know, twenty seventeen, you, you really found some form. Uh, obviously, 
you know, the silver medal at the, the, the World Triathlon Series Grand Final in Rotterdam in September 2017. And then one week later, I think it was one week, that uh, we all converged on Jersey for uh, Super League Jersey, round two of the Super League, after you had also tasted the Super League Tri-Series in, uh, in Hamilton Island. And uh, you took the win there in such convincing form. And then I believe it might have been one or two weeks after that, you went on to Bahrain and, and took out the, you know, the 70.3 uh, Bar- Bahrain title there, you know, knocking off uh, Terenzo, Bazzoni and, and Gomez, Javier in fourth. That was like two, man- two months, I think, between Jersey and Bahrain. Sorry, two months, so it was only a few weeks. It, f- yeah. it felt like a shorter so space of time. I was able to time. put in a lot of training in between. Some yeah, good- but that, that was a very good uh, end of the season, especially with starting with Montreal, second place there, and then Stockholm and second place, and then going into the grand final. So, yeah, that was great racing like in a row and be able to finish off with the win there in Super League was uh, fantastic. I was like waiting for the win <laughs> uh, at the last part of the season. So, yeah, it was good to get it there. What, was the, what did you learn from uh, Hamilton Island Super League that you then put into place for Jersey Super League? Uh, I learned that <laughs> the race, uh, what you're doing the first half of the race doesn't really matter. It's uh, how you're able to pick it up, especially in uh, in the heat uh, at Hamilton Island. You you have to be able to stay calm and try to hide in the group until the last round because so much can happen there. And uh, I think I went out a little bit too hard, or I went out at a normal level, but then because of the heat and the humidity, I got broken down to, <laughs> I was just jogging at the end. On day one, and then I realized, okay, I have to pace, pace much better. Yeah, Ho- hopefully we'll have another chance at Hamilton Island in the Super League again because I would like to, uh, uh, yeah, get my revenge there on the island. <laughs> and I mean, you know, your training environment, temperature-wise, you know, in Bergen there, yeah. what's the temperature, ambient temperature, sort of through the year? I mean, in Hamilton Island, it was oppressive and ridiculously hot even yeah. for someone like myself that lives here in Queensland on the Gold Coast. So for you to fly in, what, you know, what, what's the sort of all year, what's your year look like in terms of temperatures? Uh, the average is like, I think, around 5 to 10 in the winter and then maybe 15 up to 20 degrees in the summer. So if it's above 20 degrees, then it's super warm here in Bergen. Uh, actually, now we had three weeks in a row with just sun and uh, <laughs> around 20 degrees and it's it's been amazing so to go from to go from there and go to maybe 30 degrees and really humid it's uh, it's always a challenge well certainly some of your recent photos uh on your instagram gallery uh have been quite spectacular so it's great to see you getting some uh some good weather fair weather training in yeah. christian on your performances christian um you know what do you think it was that had you come into such great form in that back end of 2017 you know what would you identify as the one or two things that you were doing that you know, really helped you step it up and knock off the likes of Johnny Brownlee and Richard Murray, you know, as an example in Super League? I, I think it's the fact that we're lifting the intensity a little bit uh, throughout the season. Uh, during the winter season, we aren't really doing so much race-specific as everyone else. So that, that maybe uh, makes it a little bit harder when we start racing uh, early in the season because then everyone else is a little bit faster and yeah we're kind of hanging a little bit behind because of that but then when you are getting through a couple of months of racing then we're getting used to the pace and we're able to lift it up a little bit the other guys they i guess they are uh, struggling a little bit more with their threshold uh, as we are getting at the end of the season and just a good combination for for me to see that they are going getting a little bit a little bit slower and i'm able to Back it up a little bit more. Yeah, and I recall, Christian, off the back of uh, Jersey speaking to you at Jersey, and I think you, you mentioned uh, you were straight off to do some altitude training in that two months before Bahrain 70.3. Yeah, yeah. we had two weeks there just after Jersey where we could do whatever training we wanted to do as long as we were fit for doing uh, a three days of testing at the end of the two weeks. And after that, we went to Sierra Nevada and stayed in Spain at 2,300 meters of altitude. 
to stay there for three weeks and was able to do some really uh, high volume training. And the idea with that was to kind of prepare a little bit for Bahrain as well. But I was just, I was smashed after that camp and I was really struggling the four weeks I was home before Bahrain and my fitness was, I think my fitness was good, but I was just smashed, smashed in my legs and, and luckily I was able to kind of loosen it up before the race and yeah, because I was really nervous like two weeks out from the race uh, after that training camp. You were nervous about how you were feeling? Yeah, well, I was. my level was just, uh, my power on the bike was really, really low. Like I was really muscular, uh, smashed in the, in the cycling muscles after doing high volume. Yeah, I was able to just loose it up just in time for the race and and christian you mentioned there you were doing high volume training what does that look like for christian blumenfeld is that 20 hours a week 30 hours a week 40 hours a week what you know to be specific it's between 30 and 40 or 30 isn't really a high volume on training camp but maybe 35 35 around there and that would be made Uh, up made up of what sort of breakdown across the swim bike and run usually it's very even like if you look throughout the year, it's it's very like 33% swimming, 33% running and the same on the bike. But then maybe on the training camp, we're having a little bit longer volume on the bike and a little bit less in the pool. And then at home, it's a little bit more in the pool and then a little bit less cycling. But throughout the year, it's really even. And Christian, you mentioned the testing. You, you, you had to, you could do whatever you wanted, but you just needed to be ready for three days of testing. Uh, that's mm. in lab testing with things like the VO2 max test. Is that right? What other tests were you doing? Yes, uh, VO2 max and you know threshold, finding the two thresholds and uh, seeing how the lactate curve is is going. Yeah, it's it's all in. On day one, we do a cycle test, and then day two. A test in the pool, and then on Sunday we have the test again in the lab on the run. So we're testing all the three disciplines to try to get a better picture of um, how how I'm responding on the training, and also how at what kind of pace or power I should be riding on on training. And uh, the the video that you put up was of your VO2 max test running on the treadmill, and uh, a listener had asked, you know, what speed was Christian running at at the end? I'm I'm predicting 22, 23 k an hour. What speed did you hit hit up to at the end of that VO2 max test? Well, that uh, it's not actually a proper VO2 max. I think if we were putting in a little bit incline, it could get a little bit higher VO2 max. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, we're doing um, a three three minutes all out. Okay. But before that, we're doing 30 seconds build up. So it's um, a 30 seconds build up and then three minutes all out. And the first minute there, I'm doing at 23k per hour. Yep. And the last uh, two minutes is 24k wow. per hour. <laughs> so you are moving. <laughs> and uh, as a physiotherapist, Christian, I'm delighted to look at that video footage and see how controlled you are through your pelvis. So well done on the biomechanics. <laughs> great, great, great work. And, you know, you mentioned your, your VO2 max has been tested as high as 87. Uh, so that's a terrific mm. score, hey? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, w- it would be nice to see if I can break the 90s uh, this year. We actually, had, I was I was in the lab earlier this year, and I forgot to switch the um, the weight on the on the machine. So it was the body weight to the guy in front of me instead of my own. <laughs> so as we were doing, as we were doing the test, I got like amazing numbers <laughs> up in the high nineties. I was like super pleased uh... before I realized like no. It's Gustav's kilos that I, it's in the machine and not mine. One of one of your teammates there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, so, uh, was a bit like disappointing. <laughs> I thought I was like in amazing shape, but uh, yeah, hope, hope, hopefully I will get be able to break the night this this year. Uh, and I understand, and you know, and talking of Gustav, uh, you know, Norway set a world triathlon series. You know, first a, a history first, where uh, in at the Bermuda round in 2018 here of the world triathlon series. Uh, you know, Kasper Storne is your, your teammate there, Norwegian teammate, took the win. You came in in second and Gustav came in third. So that was uh, something else. What an incredible race. Yeah, that was amazing. So I don't think anyone saw that coming. 
Yeah, it would be hard to back that up again in Leeds. When you say no one saw it coming, do you mean the other competitors or you, yourselves as the athletes or the, your coach? I uh, didn't really believe that like before the race that we could do one, two, three. I thought that maybe we could have two Norwegians on the podium. <laughs> it's not often you are getting a, are able to break away three guys from the same country without anyone is trying to pull you back. So um, it was just a very odd race. And uh, luckily, it paid off. Well, uh, and it's, it's also so nice. It's also so nice to see um, the, the guys I'm training with every day. It's also getting um, the results out in competition because I kind of I can see they're they're doing basically the same training as I do every day, and they're really working hard. So it's nice to see that they're also getting the results on the. Um, world level yeah i mean it was just something uh something to behold it was it's one of the most memorable world triathlon series races i've viewed so uh so well done uh on your second and well done to the, the norwegians across the board uh in terms of uh christian the 28 18 season you know it started off with the dnf in tricky conditions in abu dhabi second there in bermuda and dnf in yokohama you're 10 days out as we record this from Leeds. Uh, what are you trying to pull out of this year's World Triathlon Series, Christian? Uh, the main goal is to win it. So I'm kind of, I only have one chance left, and that's to perform in every remaining races. I definitely feel the pressure now before Leeds that, yeah, I need to be up there and I can't do any mistakes. It, it will make it, makes it tough as I've already got two DNF, but yeah. I'm looking forward to to go to Leeds and and try to race there. And psychologically, how do you prepare for that? Now the pressure's on you with the, the start of the season to execute well in every remaining race. You know, how will you approach it? Will you just take it race by race and do what you normally do, just business as usual? I think, yeah, I have to take it as race by race. And uh, I also have to do, instead of trying to build the fitness throughout the season, so I'm quite fit at the end of the year i think i have to uh, start doing a little bit higher intensity of training uh earlier so like actually two weeks ago i started picking up the intensity to be able to be in a better shape for leads than i was in yokohama and in bermuda so i think i will be a little bit fitter now but then I, again i might have to suffer suffer for it at the end of the year <laughs> Well, uh, well, time will tell. Uh, Christian, what would you rate as your best performance to date? What's the one that's most special to you and why? Uh, best performance? Uh, it's uh, The most special one is definitely Bahrain. I've never been digging that deep before and yeah, it was a very long day and <laughs> that's maybe the most emotional win. But uh, it's not the best performance. Um Maybe Super League. It, it's hard to say a World Series since I haven't won anyone. So it's hard to pick like a second place and say that it's my best performance. Yeah. So I will go for Jersey. Okay. So you're putting up the Super League uh, as as the the key result thus far, Christian. Before we uh, we we cover career lows and performance round, the performance round. Mm. Uh, your outing in 2016 at the, the the Rio Olympic Games. You were just 21 years of age, I believe. Um, I've heard you previously reference. You know, you you weren't thrilled with your 13th place, but. What did you take out of your Rio Olympic Games debut experience uh, in terms of learnings and how will you use that looking forward to 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games? Uh, I think I will have to be more a part of the decisions on like <laughs> on the planning uh, for the last week before the Olympics in Tokyo. So I kind of, I know where I'm staying, I know where I'm going to be training and yeah, I'm going to take more more of the decisions there not just trust uh trust the plan that my coaches are making so for example in rio i would i think it wasn't really a good idea to stay in the athlete village at all and now looking back i would go on straight to Cabana and stay there for the last uh, week maybe to just try to rest there and also i would like to do the test event to get our get an idea of the race uh, and the course before, so just just some smaller things. 
And you mentioned the athlete village there. Is that because of the distraction or the size of it or you know, what, what, what would have you not be keen to stay in the athlete village again for an Olympic Games? Uh, it's a little bit because of the size. You kind of have to walk 10 minutes to the... If I'm staying outside of the athlete village, it's, it's more like a normal race where you feel more free to do whatever you want and it's more simple. It's more like racing a World Series race where you can just stay in the town and don't really have to worry about too many new people and you can just relax and conserve energy. Yeah. Got it. You're listening to Kristin Blumenfeld, Norwegian Olympic triathlete, sharing around the highs, the lows, and the learnings of his career to date. If you missed last week's episode featuring another Olympic triathlete, Brad Carterfeld, then here's a little snippet. That was always the biggest fear. As a pro athlete doing well, you're kind of always worried about what's next and how long it's going to take to transition properly into the real world. To tune into the full episode and explore the archives of the show, be sure to jump over to pogophysio.com.au or simply peruse the archives from your favourite podcast player. But for now, let's jump back to Christian Blumenfeld. Christian, uh, this show is about the the highs, the lows, and the learnings. Mm. What's been your darkest day in your career to date? Has there been a moment where you really just struggled? When I was uh, going from junior to senior, at the end of my junior career, I got like uh, a stress fracture uh, in my navicular because I was trying to pick up the running volume and the cycling volume to prepare for the senior level. Uh, so at the end of my junior years, I built it up a stress fracture that took me nine months to come back off. So that's definitely my kind of darkest uh, moment when I couldn't run for nine months and then try to jump straight into an Olympic qualification for Rio. Gosh, so that's uh, that's pushing it. And uh, you spent how long in a moon boot, Christian, for your, your navicular fracture, stress fracture? Nothing. They they told me I. Could, just had to not put pressure on it. Yep. But I would be fine to go without. So I was like kind of uh, hinking back and forward because I didn't want to walk on it, but uh, they, they thought that it wasn't a good idea to put a booth on it. So, and so, you know, it took nine months, and uh, but you got there. Christian, uh, let's throw into a performance round. So I'm going to ask you some uh, rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, Christian Blumenfeld, what's the training session you most dislike? Uh, that's a swimming session without having a, a cup of coffee before <laughs> an a.m. swim. How early are we talking? Like 6 a.m. swim without coffee, <laughs> that's, that's the worst. Uh, like the body doesn't work at all. Brilliant. Training session you most love? Either a brick session, bike to run on the track or just a simple pure running track. Session. Any specific favorites, you know, running track session and then brick session that you just love? Uh, when, it's, when it's building up, so maybe 12K in total of hard running, but finishing off with some 400s with a minute rest where, where I can just build up the pace and end it up uh, ending the session with a quite fast feeling. Yeah, and I've seen you post some uh, pretty impressive uh, training sessions uh, on the track on, on your Instagram gallery, gallery. And what about brick session, you know, bike to run? What might you do there? Uh, usually it's uh, between two and five transitions where we just try to stay at around race pace. And uh, the longer sessions, they're about 50 to 60 minutes of cycling and then 10 to 12K of running at high intensity. So they, they are it's like a three to four hours uh, long session in wow. total. So solid, solid. Favorite pre-race meal? What fuels mm. Christian Blumenfeld? What did you have in uh, Jersey? Jersey for Super League? <laughs> uh, that was just some simple bread and uh, with cheese and ham and orange juice. And coffee, obviously. <laughs> What's your, uh, your, your your sleep routine like? What time do you get to bed and what time do you typically get up? It depends a little bit on where I am in the world and, and what rhythm we have on the swim. Usually it's like going to bed 10 and then waking up maybe 7 when we're on training camp and then having the first session 9 or 
eight. Yeah, it's good. You're getting some good sleep. Christian, who's the athlete that you most admire and why? In triathlon or? Any athlete. Alexander Della Owen. Uh, simply because, yeah, I grew up with him and I've kind of seen uh, his, how he has been able to develop from a junior career to to the world stage in swimming when I was younger. So that's that's great that it hasn't changed even through your uh, your professional career. Now he's still the athlete you most admire. That's that's significant. Who's the toughest competitor you've ever raced against, and why? Oh, that's Alistair because uh, he's he's the best. He's the fittest uh, triathlete out there, and uh, I haven't been able to beat him once. So so Alistair Brownlee, definitely yeah, Alistair. got it. Yeah. Toughest competitor, Alistair. Is there a mantra that you use, Christian, when you're racing? Uh, not really. So nothing that you consistently share, you know, have going through your head. It varies. Any Anything that you have said on a, on a given performance that's worked well for you? Self-talk? Uh, I, I, I'd like to – no, there's nothing like I'm telling myself. It's more, you know, the at the end of the race is very often like uh, – uh, I have that I'm scared of going into the sprint, so that's why I'm just I'm running because I'm afraid to go into a sprint. Yeah, kind of because I know that if if it came down to like a hundred or two hundred last uh, last two hundred meter sprint, then my chances is really small. So that's why I'm kind of <laughs> having to attack with a K or a K and a half to go. So it's more. Just by instinct. Wow, because it's interesting. Martin uh, underscore nine 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 zero on Instagram, you know, did comment around this. Being known as one of the fiercest and gutsiest racers out there, does Christian have a race mantra or phrases that keep you going hard and motivate you during a race? And obviously, you've just answered that. And it's more, you know, you're not wanting to leave it to a sprint, so you're laying it all down out in the course. Try to make the sprint as long as possible. <laughs> so, well, uh, well, it's worked for you. And if, you know, you've got some uh, good good finishes there so far, Christian. So that's that's excellent. What's your best recovery tip, Christian Blumenfeld? Uh, I think it's try to get some some uh, something to eat uh, straight after training, like a proper meal, some bread or pasta or something some proper carbs and uh, protein and then just rest between the sessions don't try to do too much between between the sessions what's your uh the worst injury you've ever had christian would that be the uh, navicular stress fracture i suspect yeah for sure that's actually the only big one i've had like some smaller like it maybe a pain for a week or two but it's only that stru- i've only had the stress fracture once Got it, got it. What's one word you'd use to describe your racing style, Christian? One word. Uh, I think it's aggressive. I like that. I would agree. How would Christian Blumenfeld describe being in the zone? What does the zone feel like? How would you describe it? it, it, it uh, maybe when I'm in the zone, I think uh, maybe it looks like I'm in a deep pain, but... I don't really feel it. I'm able to close it out and I'm just yeah, in the moment and uh, everything is working. And it, it, it's not really that painful at all when I'm, when I'm like running in the front. And why do you think that is? Just because your endorphins, the, uh, you know, you're, you're in the front and you, yep, adrenaline? Yeah, I guess I, it just, <laughs> I, I'm able to close it out. So it's not, it doesn't help me to focusing on it. It's just about close it out and then focus on what you can do. Brilliant. When was the last time you were in that zone, Christian? No, it was Sunday, I guess, on the track session where I think it was just working well. You're, you're in the sweet spot. What's the hardest training session you've ever done? Oof, I've done some proper, um, with a really long one in, um, in Sierra, like 305K cycling oh, wow. we also done like some long runs i've done a 10k in the pool just butterfly i've done yeah done some hard sessions but uh, it, it's hard to pick just once yeah i had to pick a single one when you're, you're doing sessions here and there like that hey <laughs> we used to have um when i was younger we used to have uh that the last day of the year should always be the hardest day <laughs> on training <laughs> It was like a self. We could choose like whatever we want to do as long as it was the hardest training day. So that was actually the Verhoa 
did my very first triathlon. It was uh, um, on New Year's evening back in 2006, and I was like doing an Olympic distance triathlon, and that was also <laughs> crazy long and hard, and yeah, I was smashed that day as well. So, uh, so at the end of the year, you'd get to choose what you did, but it had to be the hardest session. So that's a, it's a bit of a tradition. Are you still doing that, Christian? No, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. It was more like we did it with the, my old swimming club. So that was your old swimming club. If, if you could boil, Christian, everything you've learnt down to one piece of advice for listeners on how they can pursue and perform at their physical best, mm. what would your one piece of advice be, Christian? If there was only one thing you could share. Learn to listen to your body because, and you, you have to trust it as well uh, because you can work with the very best coaches out there, but you still have to be able to know when it's too much and, and when you can actually push even harder. So be able to learn to read your own signals or listen to your own body. Yeah, that's great advice, and it's obviously uh, is that something that you've learned as you've developed with your athletic career? Yeah. So, uh, so when I'm like feeling feeling too fatigued to do a session, then then I'm the one who's like deciding, okay, we we can't do this, we have to do it less, or we have to do it more, or we can do it, we can do more, we can do less. So that's something uh, I'm like um, balancing, depending on how I'm feeling and how I'm feeling, I'm adapting the training. Accordingly, any are there any examples where you you didn't have that confidence to make that call, and, and you feel like it detrimented your performance? Yeah, when I was younger, I just tried to follow the program, and I got overtrained, and I got a stress fracture, and and I think that was um, the moment when I realized that okay, I have to say stop before <laughs> I'm getting overtrained again, or. I have to take the decision myself instead of just trusting the other other people. And and uh, Christian, I've got a listener question here that's come through from uh, it's come from uh, Ima Chriswell, who's based in the Netherlands. And Ima asks, "How is Christian's training strategy, or how does it differ from other competitors being on the bigger end of triathletes build wise physically? Is there ever a temptation to slim down more, or what has been what has Christian decided to stay where, or has he decided to stay where he is? Obviously, you're a muscular triathlete. That's the question he's asking. We like in terms of the the like the body difference. I don't think we're doing anything different. Uh, like I do no weightlifting, or it just I just swim, bike, and run. But uh, in terms of uh, the training philosophy, I think other nations, they're doing less volume and more polarized than we do. While we are doing more higher volume, longer threshold sessions, and we are much better to control intensity in training. So the, the total impact is higher. And so, uh, and, and your body uh, reflects that, Christian? Yeah. Uh, I see like the rest of my teammates, they're also kind of bigger than the average size. Yeah. So I think we don't really focusing on getting that lean as I think other athletes. I think they are looking at, okay, if I want to run faster, I have to lose another kilo yeah. instead of thinking that, okay, they can put in two, two more run sessions per week or doing a little bit longer track sessions. So they are, they are choosing more losing kilos to improve fitness instead of, uh, running more yeah that's it that's an interesting uh you know point of difference and, and on the volume on the volume christian uh c leaford uh, a 16 year old triathlete from australia asks how many kilometers a week is christian training as a junior myself what is the key to getting to where christian is now kilometers or what can you answer that yeah when when i was younger i didn't focus on kilometers at all it was more about hours since when you are training in uh, a hilly terrain, you're getting less K, but you're getting more hours. If you're, if you're training at the flat areas, then you can get the distance very, very easy. But uh, it's still about how many hours you're staying in the right intensity zone. So we used to focus on the hour 
or the time uh, duration. I think when I was a junior, I was like really surprised to see how many juniors who was doing like 12 to 15 hours of training instead of doing just over 20, 25 hours per week. So I think that's that's my best tips for junior triathlete. Just try to pick up the volume. And concentrate on the hours. Yeah, about 20 hours, Mark. Thanks for sharing that, Christian. That's that's really practical. Christian, in terms of uh, a bucket list item, what's what's on the bucket list for you with this sport, triathlon? Obviously, you're still so tender in years, 23 you're looking ahead to Tokyo Olympics, uh, I presume, down the track eventually. Uh, you'll be trying your hand at Ironman racing, the Ironman distance? Yeah, for, sh- for sure. Um, I'd love to go to, to Hawaii and, and win, uh, win that one. There's also like some, some smaller races. I'd like to do Island House ones. And as a Norwegian, I think I have to do the Norseman <laughs> at least once. Yeah. So, but that, that that's uh, for the future. And, and are you talking ten years away? Not with Corona, but uh, uh, for Norseman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little a little while to go, Christian. A fun question. Uh, I like to ask guests yeah. just to let us in on your personality. Uh, if you could have dinner with three people, living or past, who's at Christian Blumenfeld's dinner table and why? Uh, I should have prepared for this one. <laughs> As I think you have asked the other one the same question. Donald Trump and uh, Putin and Kim Jong-un. Oh, my gosh. That's a, that's a, a, a table of fireworks <laughs> and stick you in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, I can uh, yeah, lead a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be that's, – that's definitely a first, Christian, but it goes in with your aggressive uh, racing approach. So, uh, so uh, well done, well answered. Christian, uh, every – Every guest of the Physical Performance Show issues listeners with a physical challenge for the week. That can be something extremely difficult. It can be uh, more easy to accomplish. You get to choose. What's Christian Blumenfeld's mm. physical challenge to listeners for the week going to be? A physical? I will maybe say make sure that you're getting, like, starting the day off after sleeping at least eight hours the night, during the night. So that's, it's not really physical, but it gives you that advantage every day if you're able to get at least eight hours of sleep because then you're starting the day fully charged. So I will say make sure that you're getting at least eight hours of sleep for the next seven days. That's a very practical and uh, doable physical challenge for some. Others, uh, you know, who might have young children or, or, or whatever it might be, do your best. But if, if we do take it on or if you take it on, let Christian know how you've gone with it. Where can listeners follow your journey, Christian, on social? What are your handles? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Christian Blue and the same on Twitter and same on Facebook, Christian Blumenfeld. So just my name brilliant and you are a great follow christian i always enjoy your posts so uh listeners jump over and follow thank you christian uh we'll tag that up in the show notes christian blumenfeld uh you're a, an outstanding uh, young athlete and certainly an exciting athlete to watch so certainly uh wish you all the best for the rest of the 2018 season and uh hope to see you at uh the the up and coming uh, super league triathlon rounds as well yeah thank you so much for having me So there you have it, another episode of the Physica Performance Show. I trust you enjoyed today's episode featuring Christian Blumenfeld. If you did, then please let both myself and Christian know. You'll find our social media handles over at pogophysio.com.au along with a copy of the show notes. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, and your support of the Physica Performance Show, whether it's your first time tuning in or your 100th and 17th time. Thanks to those that have been jumping over to iTunes to leave ratings and reviews. That helps this show, the Physical Performance Show, get in the earbuds of more people who, just like you, are looking to pursue and perform at their physical best. 
A big thanks this week to Craig Turco. Craig rated the Physica Performance Show five stars, world-class athletes with world-class hosting. This is the only review I've ever left on iTunes, credit where credit is due. The PPS episodes are always super interesting and an awesome in-ear companion on those long runs. The way Brad is able to divulge information from his discussions is always insightful and captivating. Brad's line of questioning humanizes these elite athletes to inspire listeners. Thanks and congratulations on the show, Brad. Craig, thank you. It's that sort of feedback that really does provide the fuel to keep bringing this week in, week out to you. So thank you very much. A big thanks, of course, to the team who make this show possible. That's Susan Wilkin on All Things Show Administration, Matthew Walding, Graphic Design, and Daryl Misson, All Things Audio Engineering. Of course, another big thank you to the Gold Coast Marathon for their support and for making this show possible. Podcasts are free to download. However, they are not free to produce. Don't forget to take your podsies, that's a screenshot of the episode you're listening to, or simply a tag with a photo of you out and about performing at your physical best or in training, and tag in the episode that you are listening to, at Brad underscore beer. That'll put you in the draw to win weekly a signed copy of You Can Run Pain Free. Talking about You Can Run Pain Free, the revised and expanded second edition is now available in Australia in paperback version. If you are overseas and would like to get your hands on the revised and expanded edition, that'll be happening shortly across all of the normal platforms. In the meantime, if you'd like to pick up a copy of You Can Run Pain Free, a physio's five-step guide to helping you enjoy injury-free and faster running, then jump over to pogophysio.com.au and enter the promo code lowercase run pain free, all one word, 25. That's 25. To receive 25 percent off the recommended retail price of the revised edition of $29.95. Coming up on next week's episode of the Physica Performance Show, I caught up in person at the Gold Coast Marathon with US distance running up and coming star Laura Thwaite. In 2017 at the London Marathon, Laura ran 2.25.38 for the marathon, finishing six and clocking one of the top 10 US marathon times in history. Looking ahead, Laura has her eyes firmly set on the 2020 Olympic Marathon in Tokyo. She's coached by former guest of the show, Lee Troop, and bases herself out of that epicenter for endurance sport, Boulder, Colorado. It was a great chat that I shared with Laura. You're going to really enjoy it, so be sure to be tuning in next week. Of course, we'll be mixing it up with some expert additions. We have some great coaching additions to bring your way. So stay tuned to the Physical Performance Show. Until next time, keep pursuing your physical best performance. I'm Brad Beer, and this has been the Physical Performance Show. Hold up. 